Good morning. Thank you for joining us. We will be starting the next one minute. Kindly switch off your cameras and also mute your microphones for a better call. We will be starting the next one minute. Kindly switch off your cameras and mute your microphones. Good morning once once more. Welcome to the German vocational trainer qualification. Uh, this in a local context we call it the training of trainers, but on an international level. My name is Esther Dishu. I'm a project manager at the at the German Chamber of Commerce here in Nairobi. Uh, we will start with introduction of our presenters. On my left is uh, our team lead. Uh, at the Vocational Training Department of the German Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Bruno Bacchus, and also he's also the team uh, he's also uh, the team lead in the Skills Expert Program at uh, the German Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Bruno Bacchus, could you say hi? Hi, everybody. Uh, on my right is uh, Mr. Peter Njiru. He's the senior industrial I'm training officer. I'm not seeing this people from the National Industrial Training Authority. Mr. Peter Njiru, could you say hi? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Peter. And on his right is uh, Mrs. Jacinta Bangi from uh, Kibondeni College. She's the deputy principal. Uh, Jacinta, could you say hi? Good morning, everyone. Jacinta? Good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning. And then last but not least, we have uh, Ms. Amelik Vawil, who is the group training manager at uh, Tamarine Group. Amelik, could you say hi to the participants? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, so um, we go to the housekeeping rules. Just for your knowledge, we are requesting you to mute your microphones at all times unless allowed to speak. So when you're speaking, that's when you unmute your microphone whenever you want to. Uh, when you have a when you have a question or, you, or or a comment, there's a chat function on your right of your screen where you can uh, write your comments, you can write uh, your questions, and we will surely answer them at the end of this presentation. And finally, we're asking you to turn off your video. Can you switch off your cameras so that we can have a better quality of this presentation? So we are hoping that you can adhere to the house rules. So basically, uh, the uh, presentation will look like this. We will start with an introduction of what our uh, institution is all about, AHK Services Eastern Africa. That will be done by my colleague Kevin Rotich. Then we'll get into an understanding of what is this other international vocational trainer qualification. We had a lot of questions coming on board asking what this is, and we'll be answering this shortly. Then some another question that was coming up is what are we going to learn in the uh, in the train the trainer course? So we'll get into an understanding of what the learning content is all about. And some people were also asking if they will get certificates, if there is, is there an examination in the S. We will be responding to that issue also. Another question that was coming on board uh, in the registration is um, what is very unique about our training of trainer course? Yes. Definitely, Definitely will explain, will explain in place. In place. And then we will also respond to how then can you become part of our training. And uh, we will respond to all your questions at the end of this presentation. So at this juncture, I would want to introduce uh, my uh, colleague Kevin so that he can uh, explain 
what EHK Services Eastern Africa is all about. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you so much, Esther. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, as Esther said, my name is, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. My name is Kevin Rotic, um, also project manager within the vocational training department. Um, yeah, I'll be taking you through uh, just as brief about AHK, um, who we are and what we do. Um, <clears throat> AHK, in sense, is a German Chamber of Commerce um, abroad. Actually, AHK um, is an abbreviation for a German word, uh, Ausland Handels Kammer. Uh, people always ask me what's the relation between AHK and whenever you say, yeah, delegation of German industry and commerce, they don't really match. So we exist to, um, as the official representative of the German um, business interest, and also to promote Germany as a, a business location. Um, we also try to promote the bilateral business relations between <clears throat> Germany and the East African region through maybe engaging the uh, government and also businesses. Uh, we provide services to German companies um, and also East African companies, uh, maybe if they're interested in um, either of the markets. Um, <clears throat> also, AHK is normally a membership organization, but here in Kenya, we are not, uh, but rather we work closely with GBA, which um, is a local um, uh, organization, and we actually are, are working closely with the secretariat. Go to the next slide, Esther. Yes, some of the departments we have within AHK to be able to deliver our mandate, which is are the, the three pillars that I talked about, representation, service, and membership. Uh, in services, uh, we have um, a service department, which is mainly concerned with providing services to company in terms of yeah, promoting um, their business activities within this region or um, in the German region. We have a competence center for <clears throat> energy and environment. This department is mainly um, like a knowledge hub um, that advises local companies and German companies that are interested in the East African uh, market in the area of sustainable technology. That is um, like bioenergy, solar energy, energy efficiency, water, wastewater treatment and such like things. Um, <clears throat> they support and advise companies through studies, delegation trips, they can organize a business partner search and also a hub of information. We do have another department that is the regional coordination office because of our, of our regional presence. We are present in Ethiopia, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and um, definitely in Kenya. So we have a regional office that does the same services that we do here in Kenya in the same quality, but in this region. That is headed by our, um, my colleague called Chris. Uh, we have an office in Tanzania, and also we are planning to have an office in Ethiopia that should be opening anytime soon. <clears throat> we have um, the Export Finance Department. That is, um, it's a center that provides advisory services uh, on ex export credit guarantees um, of the German federal government. Um, before I go to the vocational training department, as mentioned before, we have GBA, which is a membership organization that closely works with um, with AHK. And finally, we have the uh, vocational training department, which deals mainly with advising companies in the establishment of do vocational training, and um, you know, support with licensing locally, quality assurance um, certification. We also have our own um, dual vocational training program that we implement and coordinate, and also offer other services like um, examiner trainings, uh, training of trainers, um, yeah, and such like things. I think that is it from my end. Back to you, Esther. 
Thank you, Kevin, for your in-depth elaboration on what we are all about. At this juncture, I would want to introduce my colleague and my uh, supervisor, Mr. Bruno Bacchus to introduce what other international vocational trainer qualification is all about. Over to you, Bruno. Thank you, Esther, and thank, thank you, Kevin. Kevin. Um, <clears throat> let me start with a, do you hear me? Okay, let me start with a, uh, with a, uh, an introduction. I'm sure all of you uh, heard or even mentioned sentences like uh, German machines are the best or German engineering is outstanding. And most people think that this is uh, because of the, the good engineers we have in Germany or the engineers and scientists who develop these machines and construct them. But on the other side, why are the same machines when they are manufactured in, let's say, in China? and often following the same construction plans. Why are they not so good? Why are they cheaper? Why are the quality? Why is the quality not so good as, as the ones manufactured in Germany? The answer is the manufacturing process. It is not enough to have good engineers and perfect plans. You also need excellent workers and in the manufacturing process. They have to be perfectly trained for their task to produce world class machines. Both levels together result in the made in Germany hallmark. Manufacturing is, of course, only one example. The same system works with uh, in administration, agriculture, nursing, and every other sector or, or profession. So <clears throat> how, do we <clears throat> how do you get these excellent workers? Well, we have to train them accordingly in the company by trainers who are equally well trained for this task. We have to invest in human capital permanently. Companies have to invest in human capital. You must never forget that those guys in the workplace are important. They are responsible for the success of the company. Every shilling we invest in their training is money that comes back manifold. And because we realize this in, in Germany, uh, the, the system is that the training is almost seven, the, the practical training is all, only happening in the companies and so um, because we started this kind of training decades ago actually you can say centuries ago we are concentrating on some, somewhere should someone should mute his mic nelson um, <clears throat> okay, now I'm, I'm out. Okay, um, the dual training means that the companies are the training venues for the practical part of the training. And because this is the, the case, the training, the trainees need to be qualified adequately. And so we started early to uh, realize that only a good trainer can train a good trainee or uh, a trainee that will become a good good employer, good worker. So we invested, or actually not we, by we I mean the private sector invested in the training a lot of money, many millions of euros every year, because the company know that they have to focus on their human capital, on their trainees. And the trainers in Germany are not full-time trainers. They are usually just doing their job. They are well-skilled well uh, laborers, well-skilled employees. They know everything about their profession. They're working, they're working there for, for years, sometimes decades. But what they don't know is how to pass on their knowledge and their skills to the next generation. And that's the reason why we need to train them accordingly. We need to teach them a, how to, to teach, how to train, which training methods there are, how to pass their knowledge on. So um, this is why we developed over some decades this training course, this training system. Uh, it was meant and done for, for sorry. Okay. Um, is, is mute your, your mic. Um, <clears throat> this training course, this training system is Ian Carl, please. 
OK, um, we adapted this training system from the German um, from the German um, special needs to international needs. We, de we adapted it to the Kenyan circumstances. We adapted it to, to many other uh, different countries all over the world. For in, it's the same system that works in, in, in South Africa, in Ghana, in, in Nigeria, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, wherever. Uh, we just took out the, the germ aspect of it and we adapted to the to, to the circumstances in the, in the in the country in this case in kenya and so we are now providing this seminar on an international level for the kenya for the kenyan well tti's private companies whoever is interested and whoever is involved in training every stakeholder that is involved in training is one of yeah. our presence. Okay, that's from my side so far. Now I hand over to you, Esther, again. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno, for taking us through what exactly the other international vocational trainer qualification is all about. The first time I got to learn what is ADA, I never thought that ADA means uh, training of trainers until I got to AHK and I learned the German word ADA. Moving on, uh, people will ask, what will you train in this? What exactly will you train in this training of trainer course? And as Bruno mentioned that this training of trainers is well um, connected with the dual system of training uh, because no one, uh, for a dual training system to happen, one uh, activity that happens is training of trainers. And uh, in this training of trainers, remember that uh, if you attended the dual vet webinar, mm -hmm. is that the training happens in two uh, places. That is in the school and also in the company. What we are practicing here is that uh, students will go to school three weeks, no, uh, one week and go to the company um, one week. And therefore, in our training, we help both the institutions, that is uh, the companies and, uh, and the training institutions to develop individual training plans for every student. And that is what one of the things that we are training in this course is to help participants learn how to come up with training plans in their organizations. Even when it comes to attachment of students, then you can, we are helping you to develop individual training plans for your students. Then number two, once we've developed the training plans, is to conduct training. If you know this saying that says that not all teachers are trainers, but all trainers are teachers, Tra teaching is not easy, training is not easy. As some people train, uh, training comes easily because it's a gift, but with good training, every teacher can become a trainer. And therefore we take you through how to uh, conduct training in a class. If I take you back to uh, the time that probably you were in school, either in your high education or in your basic education, I know there were times that you would dread going into a class. Remember, uh, reason being, probably the trainer was very boring and, at, uh, and training doesn't have to be uh, boring at all. And therefore we train you on how to understand how learners learn. Definitely, if you are a learner, sometimes uh, there are learners who learn uh, by seeing, there are others who learn by working it out and so on and so forth. And then we train you how to deploy suitable training methods. Definitely, you cannot train a practical using a lecture. So these are the things that we are training you in our training, uh, in our train the trainer course. Then we ask the, the, the that step is complete completing uh, completion of the training. How do you evaluate your training sessions? When I was in school, a lot of my trainers used to ask, are we together? And the students would respond. They would respond, yes. I can hear a lot of you saying yes, because now if you had to ask yourself, is that a question that uh, evaluates whether the training has happened? Definitely it's not, because at the end of the day, students will give you the answer that you want. And or probably uh, a, a, a trainer will ask, um, have you understood? And the trainees will respond again, 
Yes, because they want to give you the answer that you want. But in our training of trainers, we help you develop questions and to evaluate whether training has happened. Do you, do you evaluate whether training has happened in the first five minutes or do you evaluate after 45 minutes or do you wait until um, the semester is over to evaluate? So these are the things that we are training you in our training of trainer course. Then. Um, in in some of the questions that were arising in, in in our registration is how do we improve our relationship with the students and definitely this is something that we also cover in our train the trainer we train you how to communicate uh, uh, with your students how to give feedback to your students how do you motivate your trainees and uh, how do you even handle uh, conflicts when they arise even in the workplace or also in the learning institutions I, I i don't know if you have any questions but if there are any questions remember to put them in in the chat box there's a message function on your screen you can always put your questions and your comments as we move on and then we go to examination and certification definitely there is no learning without evaluating whether you have learned and that is exactly what we do in our training the trainer at the end of uh, the training we give you an examination and the examination is in two parts uh, there's an, a written examination and a practical test so the written examination is actually three hours and we uh, give you scenario questions that help you to put the concept that you've learned in our train the trainer course into action and also the practical test is 30 minutes and it's uh, evaluated by independent examination board this is these are people who've gone through uh, the same training uh, that is, that is the training of trainers and uh, they evaluate whether the topics and the concept that you've learned on how to conduct a training have been well understood and then definitely after passing our examination remember the exam the written examination you get the results the next day and the practical examination you get the results the same day so by the end of uh, the examination you have your results already and we we'll, uh, uh, we will award you with an international recognized certificate this certificate has been accredited in germany and it is recognized internationally okay so at this juncture, because we have mentioned that we've been doing training of trainers to different uh, participants, we want to bring a government agency on board to uh, give you an insight of how a train of train, uh, our training of trainer course looks like, uh, because uh, NITA has been uh, part of our training. And I would like to invite Mr. Peter Njiru, who is the Senior Industrial Training Officer, to give an oversight of what our train the trainer looks like and what is the impact of our training back at NITA. Over to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Good morning, participants. Uh, I sit here as a, as a disciple of the train the trainer program uh, that is being done by the AHK. I work for a government agency called the National Industrial Trading Authority. A number of you may have interacted with it in one way or another. And one of the key functions that we do as an authority is what we call industrial training. Basically, industrial training is training of workers in the industry. So within ourselves, we have a pool of people whom we call industrial training officers like myself, whose job is train workers in the industry. Now, for most of you that may not know, Kenya has a system that we call the apprenticeship system. Now, apprenticeship system is a dual system of training that involves training of workers both in the institutions, what we call in-center training, and in the company, what we call in-plant training. So it's a dual system. And I can tell you that this system began in Kenya since 1971. But in terms of acceptance and growth, it has taken some toll on that for it to be where it is. When did they do that? We came to realize that uh, we had trainers who had the wrong exposures. As Esther said, we assumed that all teachers are trainers. So we we'll take our trainers to the industry for the purposes of training delivery, and we didn't realize that the people we are training are even better than our trainers. So this forced us to rethink, why are we training people who appear to be better than us in terms of training delivery? 
until we came around the HK Foundation, I can tell you things have changed since that day. We sponsored a group, a group of trainers, I think there were about 10 last year, to undergo the TOT, the two-week TOT course. All of them successively got the international certification. And this is what we came to realize when we went through that program. It is one thing to train a person in a classroom. It is our own different thing to train the person in the industry. Kenya has dynamism in terms of companies. We have local companies, we have international companies. So we are working with people who have all this exposure as workers and as trainees in the various dimensions. So here you are taking a person who only graduated probably through KTTC, and you are assuming this person is a good trainer for the workplace. And we realized we were wrong on that very, very concept. So what the industry did, the industry moved away from our vocational training institutions, from our industrial training institutions, and they began relying on their own workers to train their own workers. So for the, for the purposes of a classroom training, they abandoned that theorem and they have all of it incorporated within their system. Because we were asking ourselves, why aren't companies no longer, you know, in big force bringing trainees to institutions? It's because they realize the trainers that we have are not fit for the classroom and also uh, the industry. Then the other issue that we run is that uh, K HK as, as, as trainers who have that big exposure. You know, you are not being taught from the theoretical approach. You are being taught by a person who has the experience of running the two systems. It is very different from when you are taught by a person who only understands one system. And as I'm repeating again, training a person in the classroom is very different from training a worker from the workplace where they operate. So the pool of trainers that they have made us expose our minds into the best training methods at the workplace, the best uh, evaluation methods at the workplace, and the most effective running methods that occur in the workplace. Uh, Esther has just given you a chronology of the issues that you are likely to run if you are known for this uh, very, very TOT course. And I can assure you, if your organization is thinking about having a dual system of training, you have no choice but go through such a program. Otherwise, you are likely to embarrass yourselves you will walk into the workplace and you will get embarrassed when you realize the trainee in front of you is a worker, is better experienced and exposed than yourself in aspects of training. So what we have done as data, after we took a pool of 10 people out there, you know, to AHK for the purposes of training, we have made them our, tra our champions for this other group. And I can tell you, the leadership that they have shown, shown rather has made the organization change tack and say, all our trainers, in the institution who are more than 100 plus must go through that same program. In fact, as we speak, we are in a cross discussions with AHK to see how we can roll out this program throughout the country for our trainers. And imagine we have trainers who are both in our centers and trainers that we have at the workplace. Because also the workplace employees are come, who are used as trainers are coming to us and say, look, can you mount a program that can enhance our workers who we use for training purposes? And I think now we got an opportunity where we shall be working with AHK to develop programs and for them to help us have programs that can be able to enhance those workers that are being used as trainers in the industry. So from where we sit as an authority, we can assure you that there is, there is no such training in the country of the Republic of Kenya that is being run the way AHK is running the TOT program. It, it, and I, I'm, I'm saying this again, all our trainers have gone through all those teacher training programs that all of us and most of us who are listening to me may have gone to. However, most of them realize that they are so deficient when it comes to training of workers in the industry. But now we are changing that dynamism. As we sit here, we are trying to review our programs within the confines of the Kenya National Qualifications Authority, but also we have, we, 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 they are faced with our challenge of we are taking to them dual-based dual programs, where we say we have this program that is running for one year, but the component of this is taking place in our center. Another component is taking place at the workplace. And also, those of you that may have been there last week, they were validating the, the standards for registration of qualifications. And one of the issues that we are asking ourselves is, when you put standards for a trainer, if you say that maybe a person who is training must be higher qualification, higher than the person that is being trained. On what lenses are you looking at that? 
because at times you go to the industry, the people in the industry may not have the paper qualifications that you have from your schools and the rest of it. But in terms of industry exposure and ability to deliver, they can only teach you irrespective of your qualifications. So we, we are cross looking at that to see how we admit formally the trainers that we have in the industry as formal trainers in our own environment. And I think work, working closely with HK will help us achieve that role. So in an actual extra for my two minutes or three minutes, I guess I've, uh, I've answered the issue that I was meant to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter and Jitru. I think it can never be put better than the way you've put it, that there is no other training uh, that uh, in the country than the one that we are um, conducting as AHK. Actually, when we have been conducting our training of trainer courses, one challenge that we have been getting from the industry is that the trainers from the industry went to the same system. And therefore, even as we expect uh, quality training in the industry, definitely the training uh, has to start from the industry even before we bring it to the school, if we need quality training. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, going on, moving on to the next slide. I think you've quite you've mentioned and uh, Peter has given us a very uh, elaborate way of how unique our train the trainer course is. On my right is uh, a picture, and uh, if you can see, definitely uh, there are a lot of eggs, and uh, there is one golden egg. And probably if uh, we were to talk about our uniqueness, then in all those other eggs, then will be the golden egg. Um, I'm not talking about the golden egg whereby the farmer who had a gold, uh, who had a goose, uh, who was producing golden eggs, decided to kill the goose so that he can get all the eggs. No, we are talking about the uniqueness of our training, and definitely. The most unique feature of our Train the Trainer course is that no training in the Republic, as Peter mentioned, is, is, uh, is uh, uh, focusing on in-company training. Definitely in the companies, we have technical uh, staff. We have people who have trained specifically for a given profession, but they've not been trained how to become trainers. And this is what we are focusing in, that uh, whenever a, a trainee is coming on board as, a, as an attache or as a trainee, then we are able to train and effectively transfer the skills that we know as, as trainers in the industry. And then the other part is that during our training of trainer courses, we make sure that we are bringing on board uh, both the industry and also the learning institutions on the same platform. And this platform, it, it is actually giving a, a, a platform whereby these two organizations can communicate. There has been a big wall in the past whereby the industry used to do its own things, as Peter was mentioning, and the training institutions was training something else. But on our training, uh, on our train the trainer courses, in our workshops, you'll find all these people on board and they will uh, uh, exchange ideas, they will network, and even when they go back to their workplaces, they'll still be com communicating. And this is actually uh, uh, impacting even uh, the way we do our training. Then another unique feature of our Train the Trainer course is that uh, it is an indispensable element of the dual vocational education and training system, that uh, you cannot uh, uh, practice the dual system of training if you've not done training of in-company trainers and training of uh, this, the, the trainers in the learning institutions. And as Peter mentioned, again, definitely we have highly qualified and experienced experts. We are bringing German expertise in the field of vocational training sector to impact and empower our trainers to bridge the skills gaps that are available in the industry. I will ask my colleague Bruno to explain about the quality assurance part. OK, thank you, Esther. Uh, let, let me just give you a few remarks to this one point, indispensable element of dual vocational education and training. In uh, Germany, it's really, it's mandatory that a company who will train have to have at least one uh, trainer who uh, attended this TOT course. But 
it's not only for the dual vocational training system. This uh, what you learn in this course is um, is um, good for for every training. You don't have to do a dual vocational training. You, if you are training, you need someone who knows how to train. Um, that's why we decided now to develop uh, another course. We are developing a course where we train the trainers how to develop an individual training plan. Every company who is training or even companies who have uh, offer attachments, the attache comes. Do you have a training plan for them? Usually you don't have to. You don't have, but you need one. It makes life easier for you and it and it makes it more <clears throat> easier for the for the for the attache. Is it the right word? <laughs> anyway, um, it's important. Each and every training, practical training in company training, it is important that there is a trainer that is qualified to do this training and is qualified to develop an individual training plan for each and every trainee he is training. <clears throat> um, OK, now the quality, the, the participants. This training is a maximum number uh, for 15 participants. Uh, that's just scientifically um, um, <clears throat> Um, I'm lost. No, sorry. Uh, if you have more trainees or more participants, it's not easy to train. Uh, it is remain recommended, scientifically recommended, that workshops like this one or practice intensive seminars like this one uh, should not have more than 12 to 15 participants. Actually, 12 is the ideal number, 15 is, should be the maximum. Um, <clears throat> class, the class size significantly affects the level of cognitive skills. In small classes, for instance, the average level of thinking is significantly higher than it is in larger size classes. So um, this is exactly what mirrors the, the dual vocational training system or the in-company training system. If you have a practical training with 15, 20, 25 or even 30 participants, it's nearly impossible to train them uh, good. But if you are a com if you are in the company training, you have at least maximum one, two, maximum three trainees. So it's way if more effective to train them properly than if you have 15 or 20 trainees standing around one machine. So that's why we are uh, insisting on a maximum class of 15 participants. Esther? Thank you, Bruno. So yes, it is 15 participants for quality assurance. And uh, definitely at the end of the day, we give you an international recognized certificate. I want to move on to our next slide. And uh, now that we have heard from a uh, government agency point of view, and uh, we would also want to hear from a private sector point of view. Amelik Vawil has, is the Group Training and Development Manager uh, from the Tamarind Group, and she also attended one of our Train the Trainer courses, and she'll be bringing us uh, a, an overview of what our Train the Trainer looks like from uh, the private sector point of view. Over to you, Amelik. Thanks very much, Esther. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Esther? Yeah. Okay, great. Yes, I can hear you. Super, thanks. So good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, thanks to the AHK team for facilitating this and for inviting me to take part. And thanks for all of you joining uh, today's webinar. I hope it's going to be a useful session to you. Um, I completed the 10-day TOT course last year. And I can say that it's been one of the most useful and thought-provoking courses that I've taken as a training professional. Um, it wasn't just fun and engaging. Um, it attracted people from all industries and learning institutions. Um, we've also managed to keep in touch uh, over WhatsApp uh, and drawn a lot of strength and inspiration from each other over the last year. Um, but the course was presented incredibly professionally the information and the te techniques, the tools that were shared with us were all very cutting edge um, and they're very applicable to any company that trains team members or takes on trainees in any capacity. 
Um, I completed the course with a really refreshed view on how to tackle training within our organization. And we're a hospitality organization. We've been around since the early 70s. Um, <clears throat> and dealing in hospitality, obviously, um, we deal with a lot of trainees. But since I've done the train and trainer course, I've passed on some of the information that I've learned to about 80 internal trainers as well as our management team. And in hospitality, we're always training. We constantly hire new staff. We hire a lot of casuals, whether it's for a few days or for seasonal work. Uh, we face new government regulations. For example, right now with COVID, we're facing new government regulations every day that need to be trained on. Uh, we get new products and new items that we'd like to sell to our guests. We also welcome a lot of students who join our workplaces for experience. So our industry, because it changes so quickly and there's so many trends within the hospitality industry, the really the only way for us to keep on top of it and to stay on top is through training our team. Uh, so just like Bruno says, um, you know, as much as it's not, it's not necessarily only linked to geovocational, but if for any of your internal training, this is also incredibly, uh, an incredibly powerful training to do for any of your internal trainers. The struggles that we have within hospitality is that it's very difficult to find the time to train. That can be one of our biggest challenges. Seeing past busy operations, long hours, tiring shifts, and focusing then on training plans can really be a challenge for some of our trainers and managers. But the tools that I was given and that have been shared through the Train the Trainer course gave me um, a really well-suited sort of package of, of techniques and tools that are great for the fast-paced business environment that is hospitality. Um, the tools, training methods, techniques that were passed on are very simple to use, they're effective, and they reduce the amount of time that we spent on training because time seems to always be a factor uh, when we're dealing with um, hospitality. And this is because the training course uh, that the AHK hosts teaches you how to plan, to structure, and how to execute training in a way that's very suited to specific learning outcomes, as well as specific types of learning and specific types of learners or trainees. So what I was seeing before um, was a lot of time spent trying to hammer in information when we were using the wrong techniques to train that information. This resulted in time wasted, frustrated trainers, uh, frustrated trainees, bored trainees, and the consequences of that are not just bad for our internal guests, but for our external guests that visit our restaurants and hotels. So now when we focus on training that is more short and more effective, I can see a lot more training happening in our restaurants and hotels. And that's always a big win for us. I see improved motivation and confidence to train. I see a greater desire and ability to pass on knowledge effectively. I see a better quality of training. I see a better culture of feedback. Um, and I see improved documentation around training, which if you're in an HR role, you'll understand that from an HR and a legal perspective, documenting what it is that we're training and how it is that we're training is becoming increasingly important. Um, in general, what I've seen training change to within our organization is that training has become less lecturing, more doing, and more fun. And training has become contemporary, engaging, hands-on, and relevant to our daily operations. Um, and I'd just like to uh, take just one more minute of your time to look very quickly at how we work with training schools and learning institutions. And as an industry, I think we still have quite a long way to go in terms of how we treat students who come into our workplaces for learning, training, coaching, mentoring. Instead of looking at students as cheap labor, which I hate to say is very common practice in the hospitality industry, we need a mindset shift to thinking about how we develop talent in our sector as a whole. And how do we attract this young talent into our, into our industry? And how do we keep it there? You know, the last thing that we want as training professionals is to have students change their course of study because we've given them a poor workplace experience. When we bring students into our workplaces, we really need to take a better look at an, a holistic approach and looking at how we can recruit those students after they've completed their studies. 
but that's the only way to do that really is by giving them a great learning experience and training experience in our workplaces. So we're not just elevating the standards within our own restaurants and hotels, but we're elevating the quality across the industry. Um, and we're doing this while we're reducing our recruitment co costs. So especially in times like these, that is what our training needs to be focused on. And it's the only, the only thing really that's going to get us through uh, this and, and through this crisis at the moment. You know, we have to remember that the youth is really hungry to learn, to grow and to develop. And that with training te techniques that are fun, engaging and challenging, will keep them keen to stay in this fantastic industry. Um, thank you for your time. That's, that's all from me. Thank you very much, Amelik. Uh, I think it's never easy to uh, work with young students and to make them uh, stay, especially in learning. But with the right training methods and knowing what uh, to keep them busy, then at the end of the day, you'll have uh, talented students and talented employees. I want to summarize your presentation in one slide. Uh, my colleague tells me it's not a wheel, but I would put it as a wheel. So um, from, from a, a company point of view, empowering trainers to bridge skills gaps. When uh, trainees or when new employees are joining a company and we have a very well trained uh, trainer, then there is a seamless induction of new employees. And with good training, uh, there will be an effective transfer of knowledge and skills to the new employees. I don't know if you've ever started working in an organization where you do not know what is the culture, what are the processes of what to do, but with good training and a good trainer, you fit in in an organization very easily and very soon you understand the uh, processes that happens in the company and as amelik mentioned that uh, with uh, when learning is fun and when training is effective then there's low company turnover and when there's low company uh, turnover and you have a uh, very competent employees then the productivity is high and your company have a very good competitive advantage and when you're talking about uh, high productivity and competent employees, we are talking about a, a pipeline of future leaders that even in the future you have a big pool of leaders who will propel your organization to greater heights. So I, I am hoping that the companies on board definitely will be joining our train, trainer courses so that they can also benefit from these fruits of the training. I want to hand over now to a, a, a learning institution point of view, Jacinta Nabangi, who is a deputy principal from Kibondeni College, also attended uh, our train the trainer courses. And I have to mention that Kibondeni College is our sister school, or it's our partner school uh, for the hospitality course that we are offering to, through the dual system of training. And we've trained quite a number of trainers in uh, Kibondeni College, and she'll be giving us an overview of what exactly is happening after we trained uh, their trainers. Over to you, Jacinta. Thank you, Esther. Good morning once again, our guests. Um, my name is Jacinta Nabangi, as you've been told, the deputy principal, but most importantly, the trainer in Kibondeni College. Um, I have been in the teaching profession for quite a number of years, over 20 years, or over 30 years I've been uh, teaching. But when I attended this uh, TOT course last year by AHK, I must say it gave me a total and complete turnaround in my teaching approaches and methods. It actually turned me from a traditional exam oriented teacher to a competency focused trainer. It challenged my old training methods and actually gave me the skills to be a more student-centered trainer. It changed my methods and my skills and helped me to recall um, the training method that we had learned. And I think along the way, uh, we had shelved them and we are not using them to teach. And 
we were more or less um, doing lecturing and training students just to pass exams. But this training has made us focus more on making or producing competent trainees because we have to train for the industry and you cannot train for the industry to produce someone who will just pass exams. They have to acquire the skills and in order to do this, the TOT course helped us to realize that in our planning the teaching programs, we have to have the three learning areas very much at the fore of our minds as we plan our training plans. And that is, we must think very seriously about the knowledge. We have to think very seriously about the skills and we have to think very seriously about the attitudes of the learner that we must harness in our training. And this has stunned all of us. We trained we were about uh, three of us who attended this course at the beginning. And when we went back to college, it had turned as, in fact, we, without knowing, we realized we had turned completely and our colleagues were noticing that our approaches are very, very different. And we're very, very much interested in knowing how we are teaching because our students were very vibrant, very focused, very excited, very motivated in learning. And one thing that I must say is uh, also mention is that this TOT course is um, very well structured in that AHK has put us together with our industry partners in the training. And for dual training to be effective, those of us in the institution and those in the industry must train together. Because we trained together with our hotel industry partners, we each understood our roles very well from the word go, from the foundation. And when we have gone out now to start the dual training, which we are currently carrying out, we planned the training programs together. And because we are working closely together with each other, we are able to pinpoint and see the challenges that may arise together and deal with them very uh, quickly together. This working together with the industry and the school as we carry out dual training has given our students um, a very smooth and seamless uh, training experience. Yeah, uh, We have also thus developed a very meaningful relationships together. Yeah, we, we work as one, we operate as one. We are constantly in communication with our industry partners. And this is very healthy for us and very healthy for our trainees. They feel as if they, they are in one bag, yeah, being held together and being trained one side with the school and the other side with the industry, uh, our industry partners. Kiboneni took five of us to, uh, to the training. And um, as I said, this training changed us completely, and we, our, th those of us who trained have, um, it's like we, we, we give, our, there's a ripple effect from the way we do things to the other teachers who are in, who are, uh, who have not yet attended the, the, the training. And uh, we are therefore planning that gradually all our teachers should be able to go through this TOT because we have seen the effect. Yeah. Uh, being student-centered in our approach in teaching has given our students a uh, um, very positive attitude. It has made them very, very confident students. You know, when you give them uh, work, for example, when you give them uh, learning assignments, they take it up and they put their might in and they go with it. In fact, almost the students keep leading us now. They take up their training they have embraced their training and made it um, uh, made it theirs. They don't wait for the teacher. They are eager to go. They are eager to learn, especially in the practical classes. And they do it very happily. And they learn this, this kind of teaching is making them very confident people. And the learning is very, very effective. And they are very happy and joyful in learning. They, 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 they are very highly motivated, I must say. Um, and one other thing uh, that I would like to say is that 
as we carry out dual training, and I think as Peter said, uh, he said we the students stay in the they, they train in the industry for three weeks and they come to school for one week. The effect is the experience the students are having in the industry impacts directly on our teaching approaches and the plans. They bring the experience of the industry into the classroom and this helps us to see uh, what to teach and what not to teach. In fact, it also helps us to see where we let them to lead us, you know, because they have experience in the industry that we teachers in the classroom may not be having. So we lead them and that one makes the student take center stage and they take their training in a very excited manner and they learn uh, um, with a lot of joy and a lot of motivation. And it's a very, very, very fulfilling very, very fulfilling uh, um, uh, moment for the teacher when the teach when the students lead their own training. And that's what has made us realize this is what it exactly means to have a student centered training. They actually take it up and run with it. I think that's what I have to say. Thank you very much, Jacinta, for your elaborate uh, explanation on our TOT course. Uh, I want to summarize this very um, fast. In a nutshell, Jacinta is talking about motivated trainers and trainees. She's mentioning that uh, they're working closely with the industry and this is uh, increasing the employability of the trainees. Definitely with uh, a class being fun, then uh, you will find that uh, student retention is very high. Uh, word of mouth goes very uh, fast that if um, a student if a school is uh, doing very well and the students performance is very high then the next year you'll get a lot of registrations from students and you know students uh, are peer, peer groups uh, are influences a lot when students are doing registrations i want to go now to the part now how do you uh, join our train the trainer a lot of people are asking questions on the chat box how long is the training uh, how do you get involved and this is it we are offering this training in two ways one we call it the full version and the other one we call it the basic version the full version is a complete uh, 10 days of training that is five days five working days uh, Monday to Friday so it goes 10 days so it's actually two weeks and at the end of the two weeks we do uh, we add two more days for examination so one for a written examination and the other one for the practical examination so who uh, is ideally suited for this full version actually everyone is in uh, suited for this uh, full version and this one basically targets people who are uh, in the manage uh, in the management positions, especially people who are the training leads, people who are the learning development leads, people who are uh, assigned the work of coming up with um, uh, training programs in their institutions. So yes. In this training, we go more into the psychology of training. We train trainers how to uh, do the training um, because there are some people who are asking whether we do professional training. I have to mention that this training is training trainers how to train. How do you train uh, trainees? So this is not on um, on professional training. It is actually on training trainers how to train or training trainers how to teach. And uh, if you go to the uh, basic version now here, we go to the technical stuff. I'll give you an example. If, for example, uh, I'll give you an example of a chef in the kitchen. So a chef in the kitchen does not need to understand the psychology of learning, but this uh, chef is actually the person who is in direct contact with the student and they want to train them how to make um, chicken soup or uh, any any kind of recipe that they want to make. So in this training, we train them how to effectively transfer the skill to the student. For example, if it is making a bed in uh, in uh, the housekeeping department, this 
uh, a person does not need to learn the psychology of training, but they need to know which is the best method to use when you are training a student how to do a table setup, how to uh, make a bed. So on this basic version, and it is actually very flexible, we train technical staff how to effectively transfer their knowledge and skills in their operational practices on a daily basis. Uh, I have to mention that the basic version is quite flexible. Uh, we, or the ones that we've conducted have been very um, flexible that such that uh, these technical staff have been coming once in a week and uh, they go until five weeks. So if we start uh, on the 1st of July, then they will finish on the first week of August and then definitely still on the basic version. There are two days of uh, examination. That is the practical and the written test. Now, um, as you can see, we are already one hour over. And I would like to take this opportunity to uh, answer some of your questions. Some of my colleagues have sampled uh, their questions. And I, I don't know how we do this. I think we'll take three or four questions. If you have a question, then you can raise your hand. And then we will do on a simultaneous basis such that when you raise your hand, you will ask and then you will animate your mic, you will ask and then we move on. So Richard and Murphy, I can see your hand is raised. Uh, kindly ask you. Amari, unmute your mic. Richard, okay. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, actually attended the last week's uh, webinar on dual vet. I'm happy also to have participated in this. Um, I just wish to uh, to know uh, how can the uh, training institutions that, like the Tibet institutions be incorporated into this? Okay, partly you have uh, answered this through uh, the requirements like the trainers must undertake the TOT program. But apart from that, are there any other requirements for the training institutions? Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. We will be answering your question shortly. Let me take another question um, from... Um, I have seen Brenda Chebet raising her question. Brenda? Good afternoon, everyone, and it's been a great pleasure to be part of this webinar. I have a question regarding what is the requirements. I, I see that there are two options for the basic trainer and the other options, the 10 days and the five days, what are the requirements for somebody to attend those trainings and what is the cost implications? Thank you. It's been a great session. Thank you very much. Um, Brenda will be answering your question. Chris, TTI. Uh, hello. Thank you so much, uh, Esther, for taking us through uh, today's webinar. Uh, and for thank you again for HK and uh, all the team. Uh, I think my question has been asked. I wanted to know the cost implications of the trainings uh, and if we can get uh, further more de details about the both full version and the basic version trainings. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Uh, there was one person who had raised her hand uh, and I think she dropped. Hello. Okay, yes. Hello, I have a question I would want to ask um, kindly. Um, how does uh, AHK relate with, uh, with uh, bodies like uh, CDAC and uh, institutions like uh, KTTC who are offering uh, pedagogical, pedagogical uh, 
goals to Tibet institutions in this country. Thank you very much, uh, Darwin, for your question. I think I take one more and then we go into Hello. answering the questions. Okay. Hello. Yes. Uh, this is Festus Rotich. Um, well, um, I, I would I would wish to know if there is any arrangement by HK uh, that they can conduct trainings uh, uh, regionally. I, I, by this, I mean uh, moving around the country or something like that, or selected regions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to close the question session unless there's any burning questions so that we can go to answering the questions. Is there one more burning question? Jared. Fully virtually or you have to go to, to a Tibet institution or something like that. Uh, kindly ask your question once again. I just wanted to confirm if uh, we can we can have the course virtually or uh, we have to attend a Tibet institution. Okay, so yes. Um, your question will be answered uh, uh, if I get you right. If uh, we can do the quest, uh, the the course is virtually or it has to be face to face. Allow me to give uh, my colleagues this session to answer some of your questions. I don't know if we start with Kevin. Uh, yeah, for the next uh, few minutes, Kevin, over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Esther. Um, all right, so I will randomly just ask, um, I mean, answer some of the questions, and then if there are others that I don't mention, maybe other colleagues can answer. So the first question was about um, how Tibet institutions can collaborate with us, and if there are any special requirements. Um, the answer would be um, no, you don't need to have any uh, special requirements um, if you're a trainer within a vocational training institution to take part in this training. If you have interest um, and you have the time, then yes, you can um, of course be part of this training. Um, and of course, if you can pay for it. <clears throat> Yes, um, that takes me to the next question, which is uh, the costs and also other requirements. Um, the cost for these trainings at the moment, uh, what we've been offering for the past um, few months, is uh, for the uh, full course, we've been offering it at 60,000, and um, for the basic course, we've been offering it at 30,000. So these are the costs that we have currently. It may change because um, <clears throat> it was a little bit subsidized um, by our project, uh, the project that we run within the vocational training. So it might change, but this is the current prices we do have. Um, someone asked how often, uh, no, uh, if AHK has any relation with CDAC and KTCC and such like institutions. Yes, we work closely with um, these institutions uh, because um, even though um, this is a totally different system of training that we have currently in the country, we still need to be in line with what um, the Kenyan government uh, requires and what would uh, easily be integrated within the vocational training sector. So yes, we've been working with um, CDAC closely um, in terms of um, just asking them, does this fit to um, the CBET way of training? Does it complement what they're doing? And yes, um, of course, they're happy with what we're doing, but we do not have um, a formal, if I may say, um, engagement where we say, yes, we are mandated by CDAC to do this or by KTTC to do this. But yes, we are working with them and we've built capacity of some of their trainers and also um, officers. Uh, first, as you asked um, if we can conduct training regionally, um, our training are offered on needs basis. So if we have a need in a particular region and we know we can fill a class, let's say for the 15 people, yes, we'd be so happy to come and um, do that training um, in your particular region. It's easier for one trainer to come to 
let's say, um, Rift Valley to train 15 people than 15 people coming to Nairobi to be trained. Um, the last question uh, that was asked, I think, by Jared about if we do offer these trainings virtually. At the moment, we do not have, um, we do not offer these trainings virtually. Remember, these are competency-based um, training, and sometimes some of these main practical trainings cannot really be done virtually. Um, this may require a lot of investment in terms of the kind of technology can, that can be used to, to do this kind of training online. So at the moment, we do not offer it virtually, but rather, um, yeah, it has to be a physical training. Um, I don't know if there's anything I left. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I think you answered everything, uh, at least from the one, the questions we got now. Uh, let me just uh, refer to the que question by Festus originally. Actually, we are now just working on some project where we will offer the TOT courses in Mombasa, Kuala County, and Kisumu probably, and Boringo. But these are project courses involved in a project. But I think if we are starting there, we could add another course when we are there already. So if there are interests, we could maybe um, advertise it and then we will see if we can uh, do the same courses there. Otherwise, uh, well, as Kevin said, if we got uh, enough interests, we can go to every region to offer this course. One more thing, what I need to emphasize I think is that the that the TOT courses are not bound to a special profession. It, it doesn't have to be uh, <clears throat> hospitality or whatever. We had many people from hospitality because this was our start here with the dual vocational training. So this course these courses are directed to everyone who is training, no matter what 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 the profession is or the, the background or whatever. The only thing that is important, of course, is you can only train if you have some knowledge. So you have to be experienced. You have to have a training by yourself. You have to have, uh, you have, you need to work in, in, uh, in a special profession for, for many years. You need the skills to pass on uh, before you learn how to pass on them. So that's the only condition you have to fulfill. I think, wait, there was one more question. I don't know if it was written before. I think it's quite a good question. How do you ensure the training is fun, engaging and challenging? Well, there's only one answer for this question. Join the training and you will see. Be surprised. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. Yeah, definitely there's only one way of knowing uh, whether the training is fun, challenging and it's actually um, a brain um, storming. So um, because of time, I will uh, allow Kevin to answer two questions that came from the registration form when you guys were registering, only two. And then uh, if you have any question, kindly uh, note it down on our chat box function. When we are uh, sending out uh, the uh, recording of this, um, webinar we will also send an excel sheet that has your responses to your questions kindly uh, note them down on the chat box function and we will respond even uh, when we are sending the um, the recording of this webinar over to you kevin yes Esther. I was looking at these questions and I think we've answered most of them. Uh, we've answered about the content. We've answered um, if we are planning to do uh, trainings virtually, which is no. Um, actually, we did have some trainings that we had planned. Um, we had a training calendar um, for this year, but due to COVID, we had to cancel most of them until further notice. Um, Yes, I think most of the questions that I see um, that were, were, were answered, uh, that were asked during the registration are answered because it's about qualification, the course and such like things. But if I may maybe talk about one question from the chat function, if um, 
yeah, one, one person asked about if um, our certificate can be equated with a KNQA. Um, this, uh, the TOT course is not part of, um, I would say, um, the training system, like um, um, a diploma or something like that. It's just further to enhance the skills of a trainer. So it's not um, equated to any of um, the certificate levels by KNQA. However, I must mention that uh, we as AHK are already um, mandated or accredited by KNQ to offer um, foreign qualifications and award certificates. Um, I think those are the, yeah, the rest of the questions have been answered. If we work with um, institutions like NITA, yes, we do. And um, if you were here earlier on in the presentation from someone from NITA, uh, that was a proof that we have worked with them in the past and we will continue working with them um, in the near future. About so many people were also asking about how the dual system works. Unfortunately, um, yeah, if you are not in uh, last week webinar, maybe we touched uh, um, in, in full extent about dual vocational training and how it's done. So I would say maybe when we will be sharing the um, the presentation of this training, we can also share the presentation of the, the previous um, webinar so that you get more info. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you very much, Kevin, for, your, uh, for the answers. Uh, I think Bruno has one thing to mention. Yes, <coughs> uh, it's about the cost. Everyone is interested in the in the costs of the course yes. okay um so we are not offering we are not only offering the course for individuals but we are offering this course for for companies or for training institutions as well so if there is a company who says okay can you, we have an in um, a, a, a book a whole course or a training institute says we will like to train 10 of our employees, whatever, then we can offer you, we can give you a special offer for that, just to let you know the, the companies or the training institutions who might be present. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno, for the clarification. Um, we are coming to the end of this webinar. Uh, in any case, you, if there's a pressing question or you would want to, uh, join our training uh, the trainer program you can always uh, write to us i think almost all of you have one uh, of our colleague emails you probably have my email or uh, you have you probably have Catherine's email or kevin so write to us and we will be responding to you uh, for more information, you can also contact us on uh, uh, the Delegation of German Industry and Commerce. Our website is um, there and also our email and our phone number. So um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who were able to join uh, this webinar. I hope your expectations were met and thank you very much for the interactive session. We keep the uh, chat box open for another few minutes just for you to uh, write your questions and also to write your comments. Thank you very much and have a very good afternoon. Bye bye. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.